I was sort of by saying this. Impaired to Rome is a fun game and I think you should give it a shot. You probably already heard about the unfortunate history of this game. But if you just give me a chance, I want to show you why I think you should be playing this game and also why I have over 750 hours in it. I feel that it is my duty to join the cause and spread the good word about this game as a lot of other content creators have been recently doing. I will also be making a second video on this Parthia campaign, so if that intrigues you, please consider subscribing. Anyways, join my Discord, I hope you enjoy, let's go. Hello, and welcome to Imperator Rome. Yes, you are seeing correctly, I am playing Imperator Rome. You might be saying, wait, but isn't this a dead game? Well, yes, but currently in the YouTube landscape, there seems to be some kind of movement, some kind of drive among grand strategy content creators to play and try out Impaired Rome. And I've seen that, of course, a lot of people actually like the game because the game is really good. Now, rather than sitting down right here and telling you all the reasons on why you should try out this game or why you should watch this video, how about I just show you why this game is really good and why people are coming back to it. And for your information, as of recording this, I'm at 770 hours. So I think I know a thing or two about this game. I would say amongst content creators, I'd probably have one of the highest hours in this game. Now, I don't actually know for certain, but I can speculate considering there's not really that much people who play this game, or there really wasn't. Of course, you've seen the title and thumbnail already. You know what I'm going to be playing. Let's just go straight into it. And huge, massive shout out to, of course, the... Imperator Invictus creators. I'm playing with the Imperator Invictus mods along with the letter uh, Some other small sub mods as well, but those people making Imperator Invictus Working on it are literally keeping this game alive Anyways, we are going to start as the Parnia tribe here and we are going to eventually form Parthia and conquer Persia and form a grand Parthian Empire now, I'm sure you watching this is probably new to the game and don't really know much about it. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not really good at explaining things and describing. I'm just good at just playing and showing you how things work. So, instead of just explaining to you how everything works, I will try to, you know, explain some things here and there. But, for the most part, I just want you to pay just close attention to what I'm doing, what buttons I'm pressing. And I will try to explain some things as I go. Again, I'm not going to explain everything because... I honestly rather not. But anyways, let's start off with first looking at our import routes. Of course, the first thing essential, you always need to start off with a surplus of grain. You always need to have grain. So let's trade with the Seleucids first because uh, they're going to be... We, we want to be friendly with them for now. And then next, I'm not actually sure what I'm going to go for. But if I can at least get something that I can get a capital surplus with. This natural freeman output... Or happiness, I think that's fine. What kind of levies do we get? We get, actually, of course we don't get light infantry. We get a whole bunch of horse archers and cavalry because we're step nomads. Okay, that's done. Next, we have our omen here that we have to choose. Morale of navies is completely useless. <laughs> I just, the most useless thing. We have some Zoroastrian. We have some Heptetic deities. Nothing here is really that good actually at all i guess monthly corruption let's sure let's go for that and of course down here this is our main goal we can form parthia once we get to a certain size we need a certain amount of lands here but this is the first form goal that we are going to create is dahe which is us uniting all of the uh, dahe tribes into a federated tribe, which is just an upper tier, better country overall. We get better bonuses and whatnot. So once we go from that, then we will go to Parthia. We could even embrace Zoroastrianism if we want to later down. Let us put in some ideas. We want probably morale of armies and this one as well because this is useless to us. We don't need ships. Now we have national tribes and output plus 12%. Now this is going to be interesting because we need to do a lot of things here starting off as a tribe. First of all, we need to civilize. 
And that's a whole process. Essentially, what we need to do is build a city here first in our capital. Then we need to make sure we move everyone to our capital with century, centralized population. Make sure we want to get all the tribesmen from the settlements into the city. And then we want to build uh, certain buildings to increase the citizen uh, ratio in the city. And that's because we need citizens because they actually make research points. The research points are important. Well... To research things. But anyway, speaking of missions, let's go for the matter of Sakia. Where is that, actually? So here. So we want to conquer all of this, apparently. Okay, well... I mean... I need to conquer enough lands to form Dahe first. So essentially, literally all of our neighbors, we need to attack. So we're not going to ally any of our neighbors. We're gonna ally the Kresmians here. And then we're gonna, honestly, just fabricate claims immediately right here. Luckily, the lands that we will be conquering are of our culture, so once we get more people of our culture in our nation, we can get um, larger levies. Anyways, I think it's time to start. We got our ally, we're getting claims, we've gotten the early stuff done. Of course, to start off, I forgot to look at our ruler. We're harsh and ambitious. Moksasome Yatarim. Mm, I, I don't know if I said that correctly. Council speaks work. Cost, score, I said that wrong, my English is bad. Of course, we have our centralization here. We need to pass certain laws to increase our centralization in order to... What is it? Uh, in order to... Civilize, yes. Of course, we have our heritage here we have to look at. Heritage of the children of Artaxerxes II. We get monthly ruler popularity gain plus 0.2, which is really good. Culture integration speed negative 25%, which is not so good. And planes combat bonus plus 10%. Pretty much means that we shouldn't really integrate people. We should assimilate and we should also make sure we're always fighting in planes, which is easy because actually there's not much planes over here. It's just a whole bunch of step. One of the three tribes of the Dahe, the Parni were those famous people who would invade the newly freed Seleucid satrapy of Parthia and found the famous and dangerous Arsacid dynasties. Dynasties? Believing the royal line to have come down from Achaemenid King Artaxerxes II, they carry a great claim of legitimacy to the rule to rule the Iranian plateau. Reportedly speaking a language between Scythian and Median, but were more likely to have simply been a Scythian tribe which migrated from south into to the Orcus River along with many other tribes which took up residence along the Greater Oxus River as part of the Great Wave of Nomadic Migrations. I love history. You have your levies up so that makes me believe that you want to attack someone. Usually that is a telling sign that your neighbor is going to attack. If you see them raise their levies, and if they come to your border, that means they are about to attack you. Yeah, they're alone. They're, they should be fine by themselves. They don't need to call me in. I just got a claim. Let's raise up our levies because you can raise up your levies before you go to war. So you can prepare the invasion before it actually begins. You know, and this is a really cool aspect of the game. So what's happening here is that this guy, this chief is disloyal to me so that means his army here i cannot control he is doing whatever he wants here with this army now he is completely controlling it which is an amazing feature of this game anyways i will bribe him so he can stop doing that and i would like to control him thank you charismia is uh, i i don't want to help you but i guess i have to or else the alliance is gone the ai is a bit Annoying with that, they just call you into your wars even though, like, it's clear that they don't need help. Let's declare this war, and we don't need to call in our ally. I think we can just do this 1v1, because I don't want my ally taking anything. That's a issue here. Apparently, also, I probably should have played this on a higher difficulty, because apparently, I've only just now, like, recently learned this, but there is a, I think, a feature in this game where the AI is unable to declare war on you if you are at war, which is just the stupidest thing I've ever heard, and I don't know if that's completely true, but that's what I've heard, and maybe if that's the case, then next time I will play on a higher difficulty, because that's a bit ridiculous of a feature. Wow, they have a lot of troops. Okay, we're just gonna have to move as a unit, and I think, honestly, we'll be okay. If we can get them while they're broken up, 
Like that? Like that? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. Easy. 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 Boom. 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 Come on. You're attacking me now. Ugh, that's annoying. Oof. Oof. I've lost a lot of morale. I think I'll be okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm alright. I'm alright. I'm alright. Yes. I'm perfectly fine. That was a stack wipe there. We're gonna have to chase them down as much as we can. Yes. 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 Okay. Let's continue to just chase them down. There we go. That's a stack wipe right there. Stack wipe. And that's essentially their entire army gone. And we've also taken their capital, so that's a full siege. Boom. So now what we need is Cyrocene, Scythia, Adapontum, and Scythia Ultima. So that's over here and then here. And our levies are going to be significantly larger here because we have more people of our culture in our nation. In fact, we automatically become a monarchy once we form Parthia, so we don't need to sit down and civilize. Our capital becomes a city as well, so we actually could just rush this. But we have to fight the Seleucids if we want to take Parthia, so we need to actually do that very quickly because in the early game, the Seleucids will be involved in a lot of wars because they're uh, fighting that other Didadoki. So, we need to actually do that pretty quickly. Okay, now that we have a claim, now we can declare this war. Of course, we also want to siege down every single province we can individually, because we can get slaves from them. Once you take a settlement right there, you can take some slaves. It says, one slave to a her, that's our capital. And the more slaves, the better, you know? You know, this is a time where slavery was pretty much essential to every single economy. And slaves are good because they just give a good amount of base tax and also uh, they can work on different goods and if you put them in certain p settlements where there are, you know, certain goods like wild game here, you can put them there and the, uh, hey, hold on, it says, you see 15 slaves here, it will create an additional wild game. And with that wild game, you can then just export it, you see, right here. Actually, I forgot to set my denied request cause, so I don't get people coming to me trying to get food from me because you don't want to sell your food. I think that's just, you know, for, for obvious reasons, you don't want to trade your food away. One, because they're not really that lucrative, and two, because, you know, it's food. <laughs> there we go. None shall have this. Take as much as we can. Let's just take everything. A chance to strike. Oh, here we go. The feeble Seleuca dynasty cowers in the west, claiming nominal overlordship of great swaths of land. The legitimacy of Seleucid rule is over. It is with interest, therefore, that one of our forging parties limped home recently, having been routed by a border patrol accompanied by Seleucus the first Nicator Seleucid, the Baselius of the Seleucid Empire. With a hasty enough response, we may be able to deal a severe blow to them, though this would surely be cause for outright war. So, we can declare this war with the war goal of Horde Conquest. I have a good amount of money. Just, just fucking rush down Parthia, take it all. Also, we got some event troops as well, which is amazing. Even though the Silicas are very large and they're not actually distracted by any other Diadoki Wars, they're going to get such a massive debuff, and I'm going to get such a massive buff that I feel like I have to just go for it. Let's just, let's just fucking go for it, man. Oh, I just took Parthia. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair enough. All right, sure. Uh, I'm Parthia now. All right, shit just moved so fast. Okay. Now, there is a different way to go about this. You could have just not, you know... Um, attacked and you know you would have been fine you'd actually got a lot of gold as well and I believe if you form Dahe and then Parthia once you form Dahe you actually get Arsaces you actually get the Arsaces himself the one who actually founded the Arsacid dynasty and then the Parthian kingdom and an empire which is actually really cool because he comes with his own bloodline as well which uh you can see here um it's bloodline certain families get their own you know blood which is really cool but you know i <laughs> we're already parthia so fuck it let's just go for it man all right let's go 
draw our battle lines here. I have no idea where they're going to be coming from, but I want to make sure we are just in a massive, huge stack. We can actually bring up a whole bunch more levies, so... Oh, I can't... I'm at war. Dang. I should have brought my levies down. That's unfortunate. I can't get any more than what I have, and I should have more than what I have. Any province taken by the Horde will fall under the Horde's control immediately. Okay, so we just go one by one then. Let's just look at army there, which is going to be annoying because they're going to immediately take land from us. Oh, there's no forts over here. Yeah, they just had, they stand no chance against us. Literally no chance. We killed 4,000 of them. Oh shit, they're about to take that actually. We need to go over there immediately. Damn it, they fucking took it. Come on. Come on, fuck off. No way, no way, no way, no way. We gotta chase him down. Come on. Yes. Yes. God fucking damn it. I can't believe they took it. We get war score from battles. So once we get 10 battles or 10 war score from battles in total, then we will be able to get ticking war score. We're absolutely destroying them in the battles. Okay, we've taken that. I don't know if it actually sounds like that, but it feels like I'm talking very weirdly and like stuttering or like kind of like stop starting if that makes any sense but it's just that i'm just super focused right now i'm really fucking focusing because i need to oh stop this man i hate uh, this war goal is like really annoying especially if you don't have any forts i have nine war score from battles so i need one more battle Okay, we now have ticking war score oh shit they're coming from the east now honestly i just want to end this war i don't feel like fighting any longer I can get them to cancel a subject. Cancel Baxter as a subject? That is a huge one. That's war over. Oh, there we go. Honestly, I just want to abort this mission. I don't really care for taking Saki anymore. I want Pearl of Parthia. That's what I want. I want to make sure I do this so I can focus on making the actual region of Parthia as strong as possible. It's from settlements and all settlements. In Kamaseni, there's four of them. Okay, there. Okay, that's all of that done. Yes, farming settlements and all that. They'll give us a local food modifier, and then build a granary, two granaries in Shafia. I need to also make Shafia a city. Where the hell even is that? There's a capital of Hyrcania. Sure, I'll do that. Get two Parthian citizens. I need to grant theater. I don't even have that researched. I need gradual economic integration. So I need one, two, three, four. Four in, to, in, in innovations. My research ratio is terrible. I need to, I need to do a lot of work. The inner workings of my mind are an enigma. All right, we have a long way to go. We have ten percent tribesmen and a whole bunch of slaves. Hopefully, we can get a larger percentage of citizens. Just got enough to build the city. Then we need to build two granaries, and then we need to save up to six hundred gold. Next thing we need is the Grand Theater, which is going to take us a while to get to that. One, two, three, f actually, one, two, three, four, five. I thought it was four, but it's actually five. Oh, these guys are just going to constantly starve. I probably should not have taken this. <gasps> Scientific breakthrough, that's huge. That's huge. That's huge. That's huge. Actually, that was not a good idea. Uh, it's only back by 10 years. Scientific breakthrough is really good. That's fine. You know, I'll take it. I'll take it. Why is my stability so low? Oh, because I have 33 aggressive expansion. I had not noticed. I'm going to change my stance to a P so I lose more aggressive expansion over time. Well, these guys are going to rebel. Look, at this point, just fucking give it back to them. Just give, just give it back to them. At this point, I couldn't be bothered. And his name is John Cena. Breakthrough. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. This might be big. This might be very ambitious. But I kind of want to just embrace his Zoriashianism. For that, I need a shit ton of political influence. I also need at least 50% of the free people in the territory par Parthenu... Parthu... Huh? Parthonisa. For non-slave pops full of religion. So for non-slave pops in my capital need to follow Zerashianism. So using horse archers and that planes bonus can really help with our existing bonus we already have. So let's go for born to ride. Okay, I figured it out. I've just moved a whole bunch of Zorashian Parthian slaves from these territories down here. I moved them all the way up to the capital. So now what they will be doing is they will be promoting to freemen. So they will be of the free 
um, class. They'll follow the religion and they'll be at least 50%, they'll be more than 50% actually of that territory. Now I just need to get the political influence and I should be fine. The issue is I will lose a shit ton of stability, but it's okay because I will be at peace. Also, my loyalty will be lost. It's fine because I will be at peace. No one will declare war to me, hopefully. I don't plan on going to war anyways for a while. I have him on influencing stakeholders as well, so hopefully we get events that increase our influence. But I think we should be good at least as long as we aren't converting them. I do not want to convert them. Okay, this is this is going to take like literal decades to convert them. I don't want them to convert. Because I feel like just converting to Zoroastrianism is just going to be the best play here if I want to conquer um, Iran. We got a breakthrough! We lose 10 aggressive expansion from this one. I can get Granny of Parthia finally. That massively increases the food capacity of this province. It's good because the more food that is available in the province, the more uh, the population growth goes up. No fucking shot! I just got murdered by my wife to put my son on the throne. And the worst part is that he's already about to fucking die. I was so- I'm so close as well to converting to Zoroastrianism. Fucking kill her. God damn it, this is gonna cause a civil war. 100% there's going to be a civil war. Oh, I need more legitimacy now! And it's going down because I'm unpopular in my negative stability. Oh my fucking god, dude. And I'm dead, and stability dropped again. Sick! Wow, that was- yep, yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh my god, thank fuck for that event. Finally, we can embrace Zoroastrianism. I will lose 30 stability. And this will all but guarantee a civil war. Now, I'm okay with a civil war because once I win the civil war, I will just get a whole bunch of stability back. So, it's fine. Now that we're Zoroastrian, we need to change around our pantheon deities as well. Oh, where did the fucking civil war go? No, no. How did you end up in prison? I'm lost. Wait, why is there no more? Fucking no way. Release him. Release him. I want a civil war. Fucking to come on. 21 months. Just do this already, man. Okay, we're now a month out from the civil war. Finally, we can do this and get rid of this stability or gain stability. We're also involved with a whole bunch of other wars. The Armenians are having their own revolts. The uh, Sogdians are having, or the Bactrians are having a rebellion. Oh, there we go. I just defeated the two armies and it's immediately over. Look at that. Gain intensibility. War at 46. Boom. Just like that. We're fine. No more civil war. Nope. That's that's a lie. That's, that's lying to you. Why does he have a... It's lying to you. That's... Right? Yeah. Okay. It just... It needs time to calculate. We don't have any more tribesmen. We just have a lot of slaves. We have way too many slaves. Let's get a Rome check. Let's see what's going on over here. Looks like Rome's still growing pretty well. Carthage is also growing in Northern Africa. The Diadochi Wars, Antigonids are slowly conquering uh, the Antipatrids. They're actually conquering Epirus. Should have diplomatic relations, and we need one more. Finally, we have it. Okay, let's build that there. Start using our investments to get some more trade routes going in our capital. Let's invest three times. Oh, that's actually perfect, because I that, that's what I was doing regardless. Grand Theater's built. Now we can start colonizing. Okay, span trade, I just realized that. I can embellish Parthamnisa. Nobles, more tax, more building slots, some more civilization. All right. Any new deity of war, please? Ahura Mazda, I think, is perfect. The god of wisdom himself. It only costs 3.75? Wait, why? It usually costs a lot more than that. Oh, religious zeal! Oh my god! Alright, Ahura Mazda is going to be our new god of war. Well, I mean, technically he isn't the god of war. He literally is just the sole god in Zoroastrianism, but you know what I mean. We have very low religious unity, so we need to start converting or just conquering more Zoroastrian lands, which we will be doing soon. Holy fuck, what the hell is all this? Whoa, that's actually- this is really cool. I spent 800 to get a bunch of citizens and nobles in there. Just plus three base tax out of just- what? Or I can just build a great temple and make four religious endowments so I don't have to spend the money. Or, instead, 
I don't get those bonuses, which those are good bonuses, like really, really good bonuses, and instead just make it a feudatory, which I kind of want to do. The religious establishment will further reward Parthia. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, I'll give it autonomy, and then I'll just give all this land over here, this Dahaean land to them, because I honestly don't want it. It will help my religious unity as well to get rid of the, all the heptatic people. I think I'll go for the natural commerce. I think that's just my default I usually go for. Because you normally, once you start to grow, you are you normally gain more income from trade than taxes. So I'll go with this, I think. Yeah, that's, that's a good passive. All right, now we have a fully Zoroastrian pantheon. Okay, her is finally a city. Let's build these libraries. I need one more. I need three. Then we can actually get down and see exactly what happens here. I think I want to focus on cavalry because I want to make legions that are just just cavalry, just uh, horse archers, light if, light cavalry, and heavy cavalry. Just that. I feel that's going to be very fun. I think that's going to be really strong as well. So let's go for cataphracts. So we can also get cavalry skirmish. That would help us a lot. And we get four innovations. Sure, let's just colonize these guys. Mura, that's not exactly where I wanted you to go. I kind of wanted you to go over here, but sure. Temples of Ahur, finally. Uh, more omen power. I'm really excited to see what happens here. Renovate the Ahur shrines. We can finally take this mission. Okay, we finished it. It's not right that the men who worship God in our name shall also serve temporal masters. We should grant autonomy to the priests of Ahur so they... So that they can devote themselves completely to holy matters. Let's see what happens. At long last, the renovations of Ahur are complete. In a grand ceremony involving both the local priesthood and spa bed, the city has been bestowed the right to rule its own matters and take up tax locally in eternity. The administration will be left in the care of one of the most pious aristocratic families of Parthia. This day will undoubtedly live in the memory of the people of Par Parthia for generations to come. As the chemistry council and his descendants will rule a her in per perpetuity. Religious state. This state was founded by the priesthood of a great temple. To this day, they revere the old traditions of their predecessors, even if some would say the rule has grown increasingly focused on the temporal world over time. And now I just want to give them more of this. Yeah, I'm just going to give all this away to them. And Parnia. That's what I want. I've lost my rank. I've, I went down to rank, but which is fine. I don't really care. Cool. That's actually really cool. We just have just a theocratic state, a theocratic monarchy over here ruling in our north. That's Man, Imperator Invictus, this mod is just so full of flavor. Anyways, we can finish this. We'll get all these claims, and then we will go to war with the Seleucids. That's actually pretty interesting. Well, now that I think about it, obviously, we're no longer heptatic, but we have heptatic roots. We have, you know, pagan ritualistic roots, and of course, we're, like, still in tune with that. Like, even though we converted to Zoroastrianism and, you know, see Ahura, as, Ahura Mazda as the one true god, it, it, it's actually quite... Historically accurate because historically the Parthians were like on the edge like both kind of teetering on ritualistic and monotheistic because there were some rulers that practice more monotheism and some rulers that practice their ritualistic um, pagan um, polytheism so it was kind of a mix of both but mostly it was they were pagan like they were pagan the Parthians were pagan uh, they were mostly um, you know, into that stuff. But they did inherit some, you know, Zoroastrian traditions and, and customs and whatnot. Which is actually pretty cool. It, it shows, like, like the we accept our old ways. I don't know. It was just something interesting to think about. Also, I want to get Royal Guard. We have enough stability. That means now we can get legions. And I think before I go to war with the... Seleucids, I want to get a legion. Well, for now, this will be it, I think. Supply train as well. Here we go. We can finally get the cavalry skirmish military tradition, which gives us, well, cavalry skirmish tactic, four innovations, and plus 5% heavy cavalry discipline. This is huge, because now I can go down this even more. That's done, I think. 
we've got a good amount of discipline there. I've been building forts on the border to get ready for the inevitable war against the Seleucids, because I don't want them just running through my lands. So if you look here, they cannot get past this, they cannot get past that, and they won't be able to get past this as well. See? So the forts completely protect my core territory. Let's go mercantile for now, I guess? Maybe? Sure. Oh, that really helps our economy. Armenia wants an alliance again. Sure. Oh, they're planning my demise. Look, if you want to declare war on me, fucking feel free. Oh my god, it happened. Oh, they declared war on Armenia. Oh, that's... Oh, that's not good, actually. It is not looking very good for the Armenians. But over here on my front, it's looking all right. Oh, that's... Yep, it's over. And... What exactly changed? Really nothing. The Seleucids barely took anything. All right. Sure. That's the war then. That was very anticlimactic. We now have a truce with them until 510, so we have to wait now. Okay, I, I think I'm just going to end my alliance with the Marines, because they're just going to get me involved in, in wars that I don't want to be involved in. Looks like Roman Carthage are embroiled in the First Punic War, and Rome has landed in Africa? And Mauritania specifically. I... That's an odd place to land, but okay. The Antigonids now have replaced the Antipatrids as uh, rulers of Macedon. Etruria is still alive, and they're actually doing very strong over here in northern Italy. Interesting developments. Hmm, either more citizens or more freemen. I'd rather more citizens because I need more research. Alright, let's see what happens. We should get easily get some war score because I can hold this pretty easily. It's one province, that's it. What is that siege? What the fuck? Why are you sieging that so easily? Oh, I should have probably turned on fucking Borderlands. That would have helped a lot. <laughs> that would help so much. Oh my, you fucking dumbass. Oh my god, I feel so stupid. Like, what the hell was that? Let's see what we're gonna do against these levies. Oh my god, so much. Okay. Let's take this back real quick. Okay, we need to put you on Borderlands as well. Fuck me, this is annoying. Everything needs to go on Borderlands. Why are the Seleucids so good at sieging? I'm so confused. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. This is fucking ridiculous. What is up with that? Please take this. Thank god. We just need to take the war goal back and we'll turn the whole thing around. Sit on the fucking war goal. They're on low. They're on low. They're on low. So somehow, I'm not sure actually what's going on here. I need to get these mercenaries, I think. Fuck it, I'm getting these mercenaries now. Like, how have none of the Diadochi, not even Moria, just declared war on the Seleucids? I have no idea, man. Got military tradition, horse archer... No, fort defense. Fucking give me fort defense, please, for the love of Christ. Gain plus 10% morale of armies. Yas. Okay, we're in a better spot. We've made the comeback. Can we just white piece their allies? Yes, thank you. Okay, not that they were really do anything. I think the Seleucids are pretty much screwed now. All right, we still have negative war score. Negative 27 from battles, that's tough. It must be the Armenians here. I'm gonna wait until the Armenians are kicked, are kicked out, or at least until they leave, because I think they're just bringing down my entire war score. Yeah, they're just getting destroyed by the Seleucids. Yeah, the Armenians keep constantly losing battles. Just, just, and just leave. Just leave, please. Just, you're, you're a, a, a hindrance to this war effort. The Armenians are still in this war, which is bad. I need them out of this war because they're fucking hurting my war score. Armenians are completely useless. Oh my god. Hey, Armenia, leave the fucking war. L just, just go away, please. I, I need you to leave this war. <laughs> just... God, what the hell is that? Oh my god, they have 16 stability! Oh, there's a there's a chance that they just explode. Bactria gave me f Whoa! Okay? Just go away, Armenia, man. You're not winning this. Just leave while you still can. Look at this. Look at this. It's just all Armenia. It's all just Armenia. Negative 33 from battles, man. Oh my god. You know what? This happened um, to me before. That's not good. This happened to me before last time when I like had a solo campaign with um, Parthia. I think I called in Armenia and they just got destroyed. I don't know what it is, but Armenia is just so bad. <laughs> 
Okay, looks like the Seleucids have switched focus now, I guess. <laughs> oh, fucking Armenians, man. I can't believe they haven't just left the war, man. Go away! Oh my god, you're hurting me so much. I have the war goal, and I, I have the maximum ticking. Oh, Armenia's on medium. Oh, please. Low war enthusiasm means they are more willing to accept peace offers. Just go, just go to low, please. I'm just surprised. Like, literally, still, no one has declared war on them. Not Ptolemy, not the, the, the Lysimachids, no one. That's crazy. Not even the Morians. Well, the Morians are currently falling apart. Negative 40 from battles, all because of Armenia. Just, ah. <sighs> Oh, the most annoying thing I've ever had to experience. Sweet job. Oh, my ruler died. Terminians have 30 war exhaustion. I cannot believe they haven't left. Fucking whatever, dude. Just take the goddamn war go. I'm fucking done with this war. Fucking... I hate Armenia. Fuck you, go away. I hope you DIE IN A FIRE! The worst fucking ally possible. NEVER ally Armenia. NEVER. Whenever you play... Any nation in Imperator Rome never ally Armenia. They're the fucking worst ally in the goddamn game. What a fucking useless waste of goddamn space. I will never, I will never ally Armenia again. From this day on, I will never again ally Armenia. How long is this truce? 529. Not very long because I didn't take much. Whatever, man. Oh my god, my prayers have been finally answered. The Ptolemies fucking declared one of the Seleucids. Oh, I've been waiting. I've been saving up money. I have some more allies. Actually, I have one more ally. You're not going to help me, though, because you're in your own goddamn one. You're fucking losing. I'm going to get you as an ally. We're going to go to war with the Seleucids. I will not uh, be calling in Armenia. We're not even allied to them anymore. Fuck them. Okay, here we fucking go, guys. 9.51, that's a lot. I think I'll just get the big one, and then hopefully I can make my money back by just pillaging their uh, cities. That's my only way, really, to pay for these mercenaries. Yeah, fuck it, let's go for it. Let's go for the big one. It's time to go, gamers! All right, let's fucking do You know what? This time I'm going to save the game just in case it doesn't go well. Because I will reload the fucking save. Okay, here we go. Here we go. None shall hide. Oh, you're there. Okay. 76. But do I have to pay for your maintenance? If I have to pay for your maintenance, I'm just going to have to get rid of you. <laughs> I'm just going just gonna to have to just get rid of you. Oh, I do have to pay for your maintenance. Oh, well, at least I took it took the them away from the Sulu kids. It's good to have you here, though, so you can deal with these guys, but I need to get rid of you. Okay, good. Now, goodbye. I need to do a pro-gamer move real quick. Neglect the research. I have to do it, man. Alright, fine. This is done over here. Just take it. Okay, none shall hide. Nice. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, yeah. Egypt's also rushing into them. Oh, my God. This is... This is perfect. This is... Lovely stuff here. Oh, they've ended the war. I think the Egyptians took a little bit of stuff. Okay, I think I'm about ready to just end this one. Oh, I should probably just peace out their allies first. Well, I'm satisfied now. <laughs> I, I can end this happily knowing that I've beaten the Seleucids and I've put a pretty big dent into their empire. Of course, there will be a second part of this where we actually conquer a lot more of Persia. If you did enjoy this, please consider subscribing and whatnot. Don't forget to like and comment as well. More Imperator Rome coming in the future, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, it's been Alton HUG, signing out. See ya.